Welcome back, everybody. I'm so excited. Uh, as as probably all of you as well, we've all finished watching uh, season three. We're we're waiting season four whenever it gets approved and shot. And I wanted to welcome Jenny Cooper to the program. She plays the wonderful Joey Barnes. Welcome, welcome, Jenny. Thank you so much. It's so nice to be here. No, it's my pleasure. And you have a very lovely home. Let me just oh, start. Thank you. I cleaned it up just for you. <laughs> oh, that's, that's very kind of you. Uh, the audience and I appreciate it. Uh, I do want to begin by asking some questions that I know you probably are not able to answer. Uh, okay. on, you know, Netflix and everybody else, but I would be remiss if I didn't at least attempt to ask them. So here they are. Okay. Season three left us with a couple of uh, uh, unanswered questions. Yeah. So number one, is there anything you can tell us about whose baby is it? Is it Jack's baby? Is it Mark's baby? Can you give us any hints or clues? <laughs> you know that I cannot do that. I know. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know that I cannot really do that. Mm -hmm. You know, I think people have their theories about who it might be if it's not Jack's baby, but I'll just let them go with those theories. And there are plenty of theories about, right? We, yeah. we thought it was a binary question of, is it Jack's or is it Mark's? Apparently, right. it could be third, fourth, fifth options. There are so many theories going on out there. That's right. uh, another question that you cannot answer is, who shot Jack? We're all trying to figure out. There are plenty of theories there. I guess yeah. the question maybe I can ask you and uh, see if you can answer that off. Yeah. Do you know who shot Jack? It wasn't okay. me. I can tell you yeah. that. It wasn't Joey. Um, <laughs> and I think that more will be, you know, hopefully revealed should there be future seasons. Right. I, I certainly hope so because, uh, you know, they've been uh, kind of dragging it out all of season three. I'm hoping they will not do that with season four, which, you know, I'm hoping will get approved and, uh, and shot. And then right. uh, the last question of uh, hope, is hope alive? Or is hope, um, yeah, I was gonna make a stupid uh, word to play, but I'm not going to. So is hope alive, do you know? You're asking me all the questions I'm not allowed to answer. I mean, uh, I mean. So I think that most people know that, um, that Annette O'Toole, the actress, was not able to participate in season yes. three due to COVID, but I don't think it was anyone's intention to write her out. So I'll just say that. Good. Well, listen, that's, you, you've done a wonderful job of answering to the best of your abilities. And I Answering appreciate the unanswerable questions. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, right. we, we never want to get anybody into trouble, but we do want to know. The inquiring minds want to know because the audience is truly passionate. And by the way, everybody from our Facebook groups that are watching, hello. I'll be asking Hi, some everyone. of your questions to Jenny yeah. a little bit later in the program. Okay. So, uh, Jenny, I yeah. wanted to find out a little bit more about you, and we're going to come right back to Virgin River specifically, but I wanted people to get to know you because they know you as Joey. And then yeah. some people have uh, seen you in uh, your other work and guest star, uh, you know, things that you've done on 24 and yeah. so on. But sure. uh, tell us more about Jenny Cooper. Uh, sure. Um, I am from Canada. I'm from Toronto originally. Um, I grew up in Florida. I moved out to LA to go to school and pursue acting. And I went to USC and studied theater and film and writing and um, acting as well there and um, pretty much stayed. Although I've been back to Canada a lot um, to work because there is so much filming there and I'm a dual citizen and that tends to be a really nice you know, thing that I can kind of go back and forth and not have to worry about um, a green card or anything like that. Um, so, yeah, so that's been great. I've been able to kind of, um, you know, stay somewhat connected to my Canadian roots, um, though I'm pretty settled here now. I have three kids. I live in Encino, California, um, and we are, you know, in that back to school mode right now. <laughs> so that's kind of what I'm busy with at the moment. That's true. Did anybody start school yet? My daughter's yes. first day is today, literally. Oh, wow, really? How old is your daughter? Uh, she'll be 17 in uh, September. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so my 11-year-old boy started middle school yesterday, and then I have 9-year-old twins who will go into fourth grade next week. My 11-year-old boy still has some time left because all of next week is still off, and then he's starting. Oh, that's so, so nice. A last yeah. little bit of summer. 
he's going to enjoy. Um, that's good. And again, you, you're, uh, uh, there are some more parallels, right? I know yeah. uh, you, have a, you have a sister who uh, lives not in the same place as you are. I think she's in New York. Uh, yes. You have three kids, uh, I believe, uh, unless I'm mistaken, Joey does as well. Joey has three kids. We haven't seen yeah. them ever. <laughs> but, that, that was one of the you know, questions. Yeah. have three that could just jump in if they ever need them. <laughs> so. I, I was going to ask that question of, you know, yeah. um, how is it for you to shoot away from your children? Because they're here in California, you're in Vancouver, especially oh, since right. you're in the bubble. So whenever it is that you're shooting, uh, are any of them coming with you or uh, it's uh, bye mommy, see you in a few months? Yeah, one of them just went skulking yeah. around in the background. Yeah. Um, sorry. Uh, so I go back and forth and my husband stays here and I'm lucky to have amazing uh, in-laws who live relatively close by there in Arizona and they tend to come and kind of be the support system here while I'm gone and help with the kids taking them to school and activities and all of that but my experience is taking the kids with me to to go film something out of the country have not been successful <laughs> so for me for them it tends to just seem like it works better if they stay put in their routine and mommy goes back and forth um, and then last year, of course, had its own challenge because we were filming during COVID and quarantine, and I had to quarantine for two weeks before I could even start filming. So that was uh, that was a unique challenge for sure. Pretty tough. Uh, and in terms of uh, Joey's uh, three children, which we never see, as you pointed yeah. out, um, first of all, do we know if anything gets picked up? Will we see them? Uh, I don't know if there have been discussions. I hope so. About that. I hope okay. so. I definitely feel like there is an opportunity to show a little more of her life and how this transition affects her family. Um, yeah. But, you know, Joey's sort of a peripheral character and is really there for Mel and for her support and to show that kind of long distance relationship among the siblings. And so, mm -hmm. I, th I so they haven't gone there yet, and I don't know whether there's a plan to, you know. So there, were, there weren't any scenes that were cut out where actually Joey's children were present in the in the first uh, three seasons, right? No, there was a scene with Bill that was cut out. There was okay. a scene with my soon-to-be ex that we filmed that was like a mediation scene that was supposed to be in season three or was written to be in season three, and yeah. I guess they just decided we've never met him, we don't need to see him now <laughs> since he's leaving. Well, that's so, nice. Yeah. <laughs> and, so, uh, yeah, we haven't seen them yet. Yeah, and uh, in terms of locations, because I know some of the uh, folks on the Facebook groups were asking, um, Joey is uh, supposedly in California and LA, obviously. Uh, was everything shot kind of in Vancouver or around that area? Uh, or yeah, everything was locations? shot in Vancouver, in fact. Uh, yeah, a little known fact is that we used a different house in season three than we used in season one. Oh. And they just shot it from different angles to, I think, obviously try to make it look the same. And then they would move like large trees in the back of the window to make it look like L.A. Um, and I think they did a great job because a lot of people have asked, like, where in L.A. did you film that? And um, it was not in L.A. It was in Vancouver where they were filming everything. So that works nicely. And uh, one yeah. of the other questions is, you know, is Joey going to move to Virgin River now that, uh, you know, now that she has the freedom to do so? Yes, great question. I get a lot of uh, emails to that effect too. When are you moving to Virgin River? And I think it's an interesting question. Obviously right. it would be lovely to be, um, you know, with the cast a little more often because it's usually yeah. just me on the phone or my scenes with Alex, which of course I love. Um, but I think that, they're telling this story about these siblings who are long distance. And so it puts this kind of emotional, it gives this emotional quality to all of their scenes together because they have this limited time in which to resolve something or say something or get something off their chest. And if they're bumping into each other at Jack's bar, it yeah. becomes a very different story and relationship. And so I'm not sure whether they're interested in changing that dynamic. Yeah, it becomes Jack and Bree, and then it's uh, then we need yeah. to set up somebody for Joey to uh, to fall in love with. So that's right. Well, that would be fun too. <laughs> I, I, that's I mean, look, I point. do I do think that the post divorce story is, of course, an interesting one to tell. You know how somebody moves on from that um, and finds happiness again and love again and all of that. So it would be fun if she found it in Virgin River, but maybe maybe not. I'm not sure. 
maybe not. Maybe there's some tie in between Virgin River and LA that uh, we'll yet to have discovered. That's um, right. And I, what I really like, uh, by the way, you've mentioned uh, the long distance relationship because long distance relationships uh, in general are, are fairly difficult. And yeah. I love the way that they're showing it in Virgin River that you can have that closeness uh, yeah. while still being away. Yeah, I agree. And, and for me, in some ways, that's the most sort of personal thing about it because I, my, my own sister lives in New York and she is like the number one close person outside of my husband and kids to me. And so, yeah, there's no kind of um, BS on the phone ever. It's like get right to it. And if there's something wrong, I hear it the second she says hello and vice versa. And so to be able to have that in, in my work and in the scenes is, is really special for me. So. And have you, have you had any conversations with your sister about your relation, Joey's relationships with, uh, with Mel? And are there any parallels uh, there? Um, yeah, well, the most interesting thing is that she's the older sister. So my sister is, is older, so she's the more protective one. And I'm the one who kind of ran away to L.A. And so it's a little bit in reverse. <laughs> um, and... And it's just fun that there are all these sort of sister comments. People really do seem to respond to that relationship. I think it feels very familiar to, um, you know, to our audience, just being separated from family. And especially right now during quarantine, when people haven't seen their loved ones in so long and just, um, you know, how that phone relationship is kind of all you've got until you can hop on a plane. Um, mm. So that was kind of a meandering answer. but. <laughs> It's uh, it's it's a great one, uh, and again, uh, to uh, to finalize that piece, uh, looking at that close relationship makes me question uh, my own relationship with my own brother, who is yeah. not far away. He's only twenty five minutes away, so technically we can be a lot closer. And I feel that we're not as close as the characters that I'm watching, so that's, it makes me want to reach out and uh, and make that relationship better. That's so interesting. Yes, I I definitely have received some emails about that too, like you know, that people really respond to how close they are and it makes them want to reach out and be close and resolve something. And I think that it's something that I have always loved about film and TV is that it, it can be so informative and helpful in terms of your own relationships. And you see siblings go through something that's really uncomfortable and they have a big argument, but then on the other side of that is kind of this honesty and connection that you don't have if you don't go through the tough stuff. So. That's true. So what is your favorite part uh, or the idea of Virgin River uh, on its own? Uh, for me, I know it was, it was a great departure because a lot of the shows that I'm watching are not the same pace as uh, Virgin River. And going into Virgin River was just a, such a nice relaxing until <laughs> things got, got hairier later. It was just a yeah. nice relaxing uh, outlet to go into a softer, a uh, different pace that I really fell in love with. Yeah, I definitely think there's this comfort viewing to Virgin River that people just kind of escape to it. It's so beautiful. The scenery is amazing. Um, it's, yeah, it's comfort viewing. And, and that's like the ultimate sort of Netflix slogan with their binge watching. And, mm -hmm. and I think that to have something out there that isn't dark and, and, or violent, or it's not challenging to watch, it, it is comforting. And, and just the notion that a place like that exists in the world, you know, that there, that there's a place where everyone knows each other and, and they're kind of in each other's business, but they like it that way. And, you know, especially if you're coming from a big city, it's, it's, uh, it's comforting for sure. So I think that there's an element of that that seems to have translated all around the world. <laughs> so people are looking for connection and love and comfort and I think simpler times. I completely agree. Uh, once I started watching, I got my wife hooked on that. So uh, she watched everything. So it's, uh, we're, we're doing our part to spread the love. Oh, I love it. That's great. That's great. Yeah, I was very impressed with how speedy some people watched it. Like within 24 hours, people were done. <laughs> it's hard to stop. Uh, and I know I speak for the audience as well. It's really hard to stop. I had, I didn't even know about Virgin River. Uh, I interviewed uh, uh, the wonderful uh, Linda Boyd, who plays Lily. And yeah. in preparation for the interview, I wanted to see her on screen. So I watched uh, the pilot and then I just couldn't stop. You're right. <laughs> Are you done? Are you all the way through season three? Oh, a long, long ago. Yeah, oh, that's pretty much uh, one season 
three came out, I think uh, it took me a few days and that's it. Oh, that's, that's terrific. We just finished. <laughs> you just finished. Okay. And, uh, yes, that's embarrassing. <laughs> No, not at all. Like I said, I have three kids, so we've been a little busy. But um, do you enjoy looking at yourself on screen? Uh, no. Or, okay. <laughs> no. No, I kind of watch it like it's a horror movie, you know, like like that. Yeah. No. It's painful. I don't know. Um, yeah. I mean, you're an actor, you know. Do you like watching yourself? In some things, yes. In, oh, you uh, do? In some things, definitely. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I find um, it very painful. <laughs> I don't know. My husband's always like, what is wrong with you? Like, I'm trying to watch a show. Stop making noises. <laughs> yeah. With, with me, what I found is that I had to get over, uh, you know, the notion that my nose is too big, that my smile right. is too goofy. I had to go through all of that. Once I got over that, if I'm able to get into the character, then I kind of forget that it's me. Uh, yeah. And, but a lot of the acting that I do is smaller parts in bigger things or bigger things in smaller uh, films. So yeah. it's harder for me to kind of uh, uh, put everything aside and just look and enjoy the character. So, yeah, it's challenging. It, it is because we're self-critical by nature and then you see yourself up there on a, you know, 65 inch widescreen and it's like, no, <laughs> make it stop. What do the kids think? Uh, do the kids love uh, watching mommy on screen? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Okay. My husband enjoys it. My kids don't like it one bit. Um, they don't like seeing mommy play somebody else, especially if I'm emotional or angry or what. Just anything, even like wearing makeup and walking in high heels. They're like, "Who is that?" I, you know, I mean, we're in a pandemic. I've been walking around in pajamas for a year and a half, so I think it's really bizarre for them. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, and they don't like the attention and they don't like the, I love Virgin River. They don't like any of that. They just want mommy. Okay. That's interesting. So, yeah. But I think that probably for you, that provides an easy way of getting yourself out of the role and back into the home. Oh, definitely. It's the second I'm home. It's no, there's no glamour. <laughs> you know? okay. There's a lot to be done. So. That's yeah. nice. And what um, I know for, for a lot of actors and depending especially in the roles where you have to be emotional and when you're going through that inner turmoil that the character is uh, going through, how do you get yourself out of that? What is your process? Um, I think the older I have gotten, that the easier it is to just kind of shake it off and, mm -hmm. and that there's a much more clear separation between work and life, whereas it used to always kind of feel like it was, you know, intertwined um, in a way that I couldn't shake things, you know, that I would have to work myself up into a state. I don't feel that I work myself up into a state anymore. It's more just like, you know, you sort of a, a allow the scene to, to carry your emotions, not the other way around. And then when the scene is done, it's done, you know. Um, and Alex is so lovely to work with that I feel like the minute we sit down and look into each other's eyes, there's like a connection and a vulnerability and it just kind of goes from there. And then when the scene is over, you know, we're, we're having snacks and waiting for the next take or something like that. No, that's, that's beautiful. I think you, uh, you said a very um, key part of it, right? Let the scene carry you, you not the, uh, you carrying the scene. Um, yeah. A lot of actors need to learn that, uh, you know, myself included, it took me a while to get into that mode. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, and it's it's intimidating, right, when you see it on the page, and, and then the tears fall. You're like, oh, the tears fall? How's that going to happen? You know, But it doesn't have to happen just because it's written there. So you just play the scene, and whatever happens, happens. Um, and, and it's interesting in uh, the scene, the IVF scene, the one that the fans are all up in arms about, um, yeah, that was originally written as a scene where Joey is upset and we, we kept doing it and doing it and it wasn't, something wasn't working. And, and then I, it was probably Alex who realized, no, Mel is upset right now because of the breakup. It was, it, I don't know if you remember where that took place, but it was right after she and, and Jack break up. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think I'm giving anything away well, no. by saying that, but most people have seen season three by now. Yeah. Um, so she realized, we realized that the scene is really about 
that she's in this state and Joey has to recognize that her sister's upset and it's not just about her. And mm -hmm. and then once that moment happened, we realized, oh yeah, no, Joey's not having a breakdown in this scene. That'll happen later, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. So um, I think if you're open to really the truth of what what's happening in any given scene, then those those little stage notes become less intimidating. And kudos to the directors, right? Because some directors are very strict and no, that's the way I wanted, where others yeah. uh, are flowing with it and recognizing yeah. the truth. Oh, that. absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, Martin Wood directed that scene. He's terrific. Yeah. I've known uh, him for a very long time. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's great. And uh, again, I, I, who from the, uh, uh, from the cast did you know prior to working with? So Martin Wood was the first assistant director on my very first job, which was called Jake and the Kid. It was a prairie show filmed a long time ago um, in Edmonton, Alberta, and we were good buddies. And then we had we didn't see each other until now. Um, so it was really wild to reconnect um, with him. And otherwise, I don't think I knew anybody other than, yeah, no, I don't think I knew any of the other cast or or crew really. So it was a nice. And, and I really only worked with them all in the first season on on the Mingle episode because otherwise yeah. I kind of just come in and we do our sister scenes and maybe I see people at the trailers and I wave hello, but maybe not. <laughs> I mean, last year, I, you're literally, you don't see anybody that you're not working with. So, yeah. um, so I haven't seen the rest of the cast since season one. Got it. And how did the role come about? Um, agent, uh, the regular process, or uh, was it different? Um, so one of the original, um, executive producers, whose name is Roma Roth, um, executive produced and helped to finance something that I wrote years ago, um, that was like a lifetime romantic comedy movie called, I think I do. Um, mm -hmm. and she, I guess, remembered me from that and sent me the script and asked if it was something I'd be interested in. And then I did still have to, you know, audition and go through the process, but um, but that was sort of how it came about. And was it for specifically for the role of Joey, or uh, did you audition for other roles? No, it was originally there was a, a small conversation about Charmaine, and okay. then it quickly shifted to what about the sister? So, Good yeah. Good choice. Yeah, uh, yeah. The actress who plays Charmaine is wonderful, and. Uh, yeah. And there are all sorts of roles, and she just happens to play a role that uh, people are upset with. But that's not the actor's fault. That's just them no. being a great thing. She's amazing. And yes, I think sometimes the audience gets confused between the actor and the character. Or not confused, but they're just so close to it, and, and they feel like they know these people that they get angry. So I've had hate mail over the whole IVF suggestion. And um I don't respond, but I want to every time and just say like, you know, this wasn't my idea. It wasn't even really Joey's idea. It was the writer's idea, you know? Yeah. And it's created controversy. So I guess it was a pretty good plot point. Um, and we'll see where it goes. And do you take any of that personally? Because, you know, when I asked uh, some folks on, on Facebook for suggestions on uh, questions, uh, one was uh, not a question. It was just the, how dare did Joey, you know, uh, do this? How dare she? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I do take it personally, which is ridiculous. I shouldn't. But um, yeah, I guess I feel like I have Joey's back and, and whatever she says, there's always a way to justify it, right? That's what we do as actors. We have to justify their their decisions and actions. And, and, and I feel like she's a pretty good sister, that she really does have Mel's best interest at heart. So yeah, I've seen a few comments of how selfish and this and that. I'm like, oh my God, she's really not. But this, that's, you put it out there and people think what they think and they're, everyone's entitled to their opinions. Honestly, it surprised me because from my perspective, uh, Mel is going through a breakup. She's worried about having family. She's worried about having children. Joey is just suggesting a way to help her through that. Uh, I did not even think of somehow connection uh, to Jack. Uh, so yeah. for me, it was a total shock to read that. Yeah, I, I think so too. Um, I, I definitely didn't feel like it came from a selfish place. It felt like it came from she's upset. She thinks she's not going to be able to have a child. And if she breaks up with this man, then how long is it going to take to, to meet somebody new and have an opportunity with that person? And so as your her sister, just reminding her, you have 
options. That's it. Um, but yeah, it wasn't received that way. <laughs> so. Well, I'm sorry for the hate mail. Hopefully people yeah, realize okay. that it's a show. It's not real right. life. That's right. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, back to the show for a second. Uh, the yeah. show did such a wonderful job of portraying different love stories. Yeah. Uh, we're portraying love stories at different, uh, you know, there are people who are younger, there are people who are older, everyone in the middle. So there are yeah. beautiful love stories throughout. There is a love story of, uh, of a preacher and the child. Uh, yeah. There's all sorts of uh, beautiful things about the show that I really enjoy. If you had to pick a favorite love story from the show for you, what would, uh, what would that be? Well, I, I think I would probably have to go with Hope and Doc. Um, I mean, I, I love them all. And, and of course, I love the Jack and Mal storyline. Um, but I, I do think it's really special that they're that they're showing love at that stage of life and that it's new and complicated. They're not, you know, they're not the grandparents. They're 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 really trying to figure it out. And um, I think that's awesome. I just think it's great because I, I do think, as we all know, um, you know, in this industry, there tends to be an age at which they stop kind of having interesting yeah. storylines when it comes to love and relationships and um i just I, I really adore watching them and how authentic they are with each other and they've known each other forever and um i'm even as an audience member and because i don't have very many scenes with them i'm always curious as to where that story is going to go so I, I i would take it you're team hope as opposed to team muriel i'm for sure team hope yes <laughs> i am Although, you know, she's she's great, too, and she's a wonderful actress, but um, I think everyone's team hope, <laughs> right, um, pretty much. I, I'm, I'm on the border. I, you are. Tell me um, why. Because, uh, and again, I am a man. Obviously, there's, you know, there's nothing to hide there. So yeah. from my perspective, uh, I know that he's, uh, Doc is in love with hope. But yeah. I see Muriel as a better choice for him in terms of being yeah. a life partner, somebody that is not uh, drama filled and confrontational, somebody that allows him to be himself and then allows uh, him to have peace. And the more that story is developing, the more I'm starting to kind of get closer to Team Muriel, not because I don't like hope. But uh -huh. because from Doc's perspective, I just think he's more at peace in himself uh, when he is with Muriel. Now, whether anything will happen or not is completely <laughs> out of my head. No, but I love uh, that perspective. I feel yeah. like I was being narrow-minded and I didn't even know it. So I, I think that's terrific. Really, I do. Yeah. And and I can see I can see how you would how you would feel that way. I guess I just feel like um like they're meant to be, Doc and Hope. You know, just feels like they're that's true love, and so they have to figure it out somehow. <laughs> that's what I, I, I hope they do, and if they do, I hope uh, you know Muriel finds, uh, finds somebody her love. love. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, uh, as we wrap up, a few more questions yeah. for you. Are sure. are there any other aspects of Joey that we haven't yet seen that you are dying to tell the audience about that they just don't know about you? Um. You know, it's so interesting. I feel like Sue Tenney, our our executive producer and head writer, just has such a good grasp on kind of everyone and where all these characters are going that I'm more just kind of interested what she presents to us. Um, yeah. And I'm always kind of excited to just jump in and try it. Like I remember when she told me about the mingle and what was happening, I was like, oh, that'll be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then it was a fun challenge. And, um, you know, I think that People definitely got to see a different side of Joey from the mingle. I guess that's when everything also came out about her not so perfect life. Yeah. Um, and so I think what would be interesting to me is just to watch her rebuild her life at this point. Sort of you've seen her go from seeming like she has it all together to not really having anything together. And so what, you know, what does it look like now? What is the next phase of her life? look like i mean sort of like we were speaking about earlier it's it's always interesting and dramatic to watch somebody rebuild and in some way that's what the whole show is about because that's how mel started out so yeah. if we get to see a little bit of her rebuilding her life that would be really nice i hope so and then now uh, from just from uh jenny's perspective how much of joey is uh, similar to jenny 
Uh, I'm definitely an overprotective sibling. Okay. So that part is right on. I'm not materialistic and snobby. So I would say that part, you know, I, I have a harder time with, but I, but I get it, that that's an important part of her life. Um, my kids are around me a lot more than her kids. They're always kind of in the background doing something or the foreground. Um, but I definitely feel like we've merged and, and like we were talking about before, because this whole sister thing is so central to the story that they're telling with Joey and so central to my life right now, it does feel like there are a lot of similarities and it's pretty easy for me to just kind of jump in there and, and be Joey. That's nice. Uh, last question. You mentioned uh, your kids a few times. Uh, any of them uh, are in the business or want to be in the business or uh, based on your earlier response, they want nothing to do with it? Um, yeah, I don't know if their response to me means they don't want to do it. Um, they haven't. My daughter sometimes says, maybe I'll be an actress, maybe I'll be a writer. Um, and my <laughs> boys are both hams, so you never know. <laughs> but, uh, but at the moment, uh, they're not. I have twins. My nine-year-olds are twins. And when they were younger, there was a lot of uh, questions about whether we were going to put them in commercials or this or that because you know they're always looking for twins but we didn't it was too hectic <laughs> it's like no I have another child who's not even two I'm not putting these two to work <laughs> so that makes sense uh well you're a writer so you know maybe you can write something for them in case they that's want right. to uh, test the waters yeah that's right I would love that perfect well Jenny thank you so much for coming out it's been a pleasure uh, I so hope we get a season four, and I hope that uh, whenever it is that you shoot it, uh, you don't have to be in a bubble. Thank you so much. It was really nice chatting with you. Have My a great pleasure. day. Bye. Thanks, everybody, for uh, for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate it. We know you love Virgin River as much as we do. And uh, we thank you for tuning in. See you soon. Bye. Bye.